My next guest is a very funny gentleman. He will be working here in New York City at Caroline's, where watering the drinks is an art all its own. Uh, please welcome Mr. George Miller. George! <laughs> Thank nice you very to much. See Thank you very much. much for being here. Thank you very much now, for having me. Now, what's the? Uh, I showed up, as you see. That's right. What is the? Uh, what's the deal on your shirt? Well, Louis Louis, I was up in Seattle for a few weeks, and they're trying to make Louis Louis into the state song, okay. ra rather than Washington, my home, which is a very dull number. Uh -huh. So I'm kind of promoting it. There's a guy named. <laughs> let me tell you this whole uh, boring story. Yeah, this Ron, isn't true, is it? This, this is, is true. This is actually true. Okay. My friend Gordon McLee, who's in the back, just heard it on the news. In fact, the national news. And uh, I had kind of uh, wanted to go with Dr. Doctor. I'm, oh, I'm shouting like Gallagher was. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Doctor by the Thompson Twins. That was my first choice because <laughs> yeah. the, the lyrics are very intriguing. Do you know this song? I've heard it, sure. Dr. Doctor, can't you see I'm burning, burning? <laughs> so apparently this guy has two problems. He's on fire and he repeats himself. So right. it's... Uh, <laughs> So, so that was your first choice. That was my first song. choice, but... Uh, now Louis Louis seems yeah. to be the front runner. Louis Louis is the front yeah. runner. Yeah, Ross uh, Schaefer is the guy who started this, a guy who runs a comedy show called Almost Live, or maybe it's Almost Entertainment, I'm not sure which, in uh, Seattle. No, it's a very good comedy show, and now, he's uh, got the ball rolling. City of Seattle, uh, Office of the Mayor Proclamation. That's my proclamation. It's George Miller Day. George Miller Day. It's next uh, April Monday. April 22nd, yeah. 1985. I hope all of you can fly out just for that day. George and, Miller, comedian extraordinaire. Right, right. I've read that. And, Native uh, of the Pacific Northwest, which right. you sound you li like you lived in the woods in a lumber camp <laughs> up there, uh, has never performed in Seattle. Well, years ago with the old hungry wart, but uh, not since that time. Not since that time, yeah. You want me to read the rest of this? No, I don't want you to read it. I want to tell you what it is. It's going to be George Miller Day, and uh, I think probably everybody in Seattle will devote all their waking hours, hours just thinking of me and my activities on that day. Uh -huh. uh, the banks will be closed. <laughs> Nobody can get mail, so uh -huh. it's going to be quite an event. Well, and it's, uh, it's issued by Mayor Charles Royer, who Charles obviously Royer. has nothing to do. Yeah. I like how under his name he the, he writes the word mayor. So like, yeah, like folks right. don't aren't, yeah. aren't sure. Yeah. Well, he didn't want you to think he was the fire inspector. Now, is your uh, your family in Seattle proud? Your mom? How my is mom she? is proud. My dad, as you know, my dad and I have never really gotten along. As when I was a little kid, I used to overhear my dad sometimes talking to my mom at night about me. Yeah. There's no learning disability, Helen. He's just stupid. <laughs> and uh, and he always hurt, hurt and, feelings, oh, he did yeah. hurt my feelings tremendously. And uh, he. As I was growing up, he'd always look down at me, and he'd always say the same thing. You're no good. You've never been any good. You're no good. You've never been any good. <laughs> and sometimes we'd both get bored with that, and we'd have to change it. You're no good. Have I ever been any good? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you very much. <laughs> get a little improv. Yeah, here. that My was very nice. My favorite form of comedy yeah. improv, a notch above charades. Yeah. And uh, so... That <laughs> So that's it for your family in Seattle. Then. Yeah, really. My mom is very proud, and but my uh, my dad doesn't care. How about dating? You've been dating a lot. Well, the last time I know I was you're in really New kind York. of a ladies' man. Oh yeah, yeah. I have them just coming out of the woodwork, and uh, <laughs> I'll tell you this story. Now this is an interesting story. Uh, last time, my friend Gordon McClee, who I mentioned earlier, he got me this blind date, and he was kind of like uh, he's kind of getting a little personal. He said, "Have you ever done it with two women?" Uh -huh. And I said, "No, not even separately." So, uh, <laughs> so he says, have I got, you know, this is going to be a blind date, great girl, excuse me, lady, great even lady. though she was 12, uh, it's got to be late. So, uh, no, she wasn't 12. So I went over there and he says, she's great, right? And I'm thinking with Gordon, you know, maybe that's not really right. Maybe the door is going to open and Haystack Calhoun is going to be standing there, right? Yeah, yeah. But I go over and she was a knockout just a knockout and I went inside and she whined the whole evening long. I'm hungry. I'm just famished. I yeah. said, well, take a vitamin pill with no water. It'll get stuck in your throat. That'll fill you up. <laughs> <laughs> so she said, she kept whining. Let's do something different. So I took her over to Tattoos Against Your Will over in Queens. <laughs> They've been there. They've been there.
<laughs> Have you been over there? <laughs> so we're coming back from Tattoos Against Your Will with big eagles that we didn't, you know, yeah. we didn't want. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, she's, you know people who do this? She's uh, describing her own characteristics. It was so boring. She's, uh, yes, I always tell the truth. Uh, and of course, I don't really think you should always tell the truth. I think sometimes you should lie. Like if you're talking to somebody and you get carried away and you spit on the person, everybody's yeah. done that. Yeah. And the first thing you say, did I spit on you? The person should lie. They should say, no, you did not. Yeah. They should not say, that's all right. It was only about a pint. Yeah. <laughs> so in that case, I, I guess I would agree that with would you. That would be okay yeah. to lie, yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, then, so then, mm -hmm. so uh, then we go back to her house, right? And um, then she got into that textbook talk, you know, those kind of conversations about wants and needs and goals. She says, tell me a couple of your goals. I said, well, I'm going to have sex with you and then leave. <laughs> that would be two. Yeah, right. And after a while, I didn't even care about the sex part. I just wanted to leave. leave. So, yeah. 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 so, so that that's, that's it for dating. That was the much. end of that. Yeah, that was the end of my New York uh, Now tell me date. about your, I know that you're writing a book now. I am writing a book, and I have some excerpts for you. I'll show you oh, after good. the show. Oh, good. I'm dying to read those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, it, anyway, I thought that since I'm going to be an author, a high-powered author, sure. that I should definitely start reading yeah. a lot more. I, re I think I read The Blackboard Jungle in 1940 or mm -hmm. something like that. That was the last I'm book I read. Yeah, I'm trying to catch up. And so I read this new anti-self-help book, Your Crummy Life Will Never Change. <laughs> I read that, and uh, they bring out the fact in all the positive thinking books, and maybe you've read this also, that when you talk to somebody, that you always should try to use their name quite a bit because it makes them feel kind of important. Mm -hmm. And then, then I think some people kind of overdo that. How you doing, Bob? <laughs> Gee, I haven't heard from you in about six months, Bob. <laughs> well, that's damn nice of you, Bob. Because I keep thinking about the guy on the other end. Well, gee, I wonder if my name could be Bob. <laughs> This, this, of course, being the phone. Yeah, that I was guess. the phone. I switched hands. Yeah, I switched hands. Yeah. It's a good effect. Yeah. It's nice. You catch on so quick. Woo! <laughs> I was, uh, have you ever had Wayne Dyer on your show? Uh, no. He yes. writes a lot of those, uh, those, uh... Yeah, we had him on and made quite an impression on <laughs> <Yeah>. all of us. <laughs> He writes, well, there's been a lot of those, uh, he says, do what you want to do, and to heck with everybody else. And uh, I know you follow that philosophy. No, and I don't. There's, <laughs> there's a lot of books out now that advocate that philosophy. Your erroneous zones, looking mm. out for number one, yeah. how to be your own selfish pig. There's a whole yeah. bunch of these books out <laughs> And I read one of these books. Do you have time for this? We got to wind keep, it up. Keep here. looking at this blue we gotta card. We got to wind it up. You have okay. one big one to get us I off have, with. Uh, well, I wouldn't go so far as to say that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So, well, do you have anything that says, at least has a logical conclusion? <laughs> anyway, he says, uh, in an awkward, <laughs> in an awkward, embarrassing situation, you don't freeze up, you pay a compliment. Oh, pay a compliment. Right? So that'll ease the tension. So I'm talking to this guy, I didn't know him very well, his toupee blew onto the sidewalk. Really oh, embarrassing. Wow. So I says, uh, gee, I like your hair like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. George Miller, ladies and gentlemen, will be at Caroline's uh, here in uh, New York City all this week. And Blocks, my hometown in Seattle, Blocks on Queen Anne next Monday, uh, the 22nd through the 28th, and University of Alabama at Huntsville on May the 4th. Thank you very much. And a dental appointment on Friday. <laughs> nice to see you, George. We'll be back with Jimmy Pearsall. <laughs> is a very talented comedian. This man will be appearing tomorrow through the 16th at Stanford and Sons in Kansas City. And at the end of the month, he will be at Chip Flato's. That's Chip Flato. <laughs> at Chip Flato's San Antonio Comedy Club. Ask for it by name. Please welcome a very funny man, Mr. George Miller. George! <laughs> I think I've done enough. Goodbye. I, I was in Hollywood about uh, two weeks ago. It was real hot, right? It's like 90 degrees. 
and I'm driving around and the air conditioning in my car is broken and I got my window rolled up because of the smog, so I open my air vent. What a wonderful contraption, the air vent. Now my body's on fire, but my left knee is cool. <laughs> The air vent, about as useful as wet the air vent. <laughs> so I go over, I drive over to a place called, it's a great restaurant, Lowry's the Prime Rib. Right? Yeah, it's not, no, it's not Lowry's Prime Rib, it's Lowry's the Prime Rib. I was only in there once before with my brother, the deadbeat. <laughs> I like to talk about restaurants and food, because a lot of people today in this country have what they call an eating disorder. Well, gee, I just thought I was a big, fat pig. No, no. You have an eating disorder. Oh, I feel a lot better now. You ever do this? You eat a lot of food, you gain a lot of weight, and then you go on a motor trip and you're fat in the car. Your legs are puffing out of your pants. You are your own airbag. <laughs> You ever stay home and get high and then you order out for your food and when they bring the food and pound on your door, it scares the hell out of you? <laughs> Pizza man becomes Gestapo knock. <laughs> and when I said high, I meant getting high from alcohol because you'd think with all the alcohol rehabilitation ads on that everybody's an alcoholic. They got that one for the care unit, the lady's face down in bed and the husband's talking to her. I told the kids mommy was sick again. I didn't tell them mommy has another hangover. If you don't call somebody, I'm gonna have to call somebody. Now with this guy around, I wonder why she drinks. <laughs> he should call Snivelers Anonymous. <laughs> Some of the ads on TV are really dumb. There's that toilet bowl cleaner bully, and they sing this song. Don't be bullied by your bowl. Bully your bowl instead. This has to be assertiveness training at the lowest possible level. <laughs> Don't be bullied by your bowl. Bully your bowl instead. Does it have to be one or the other? <laughs> I'm willing to meet my bowl halfway. And they're always talking about people on television who have occasional irregularity. <laughs> Isn't that redundant? Is it possible to be irregular all the time? <laughs> There's a lot of odd terminology on TV. Sometimes the newscasters will say somebody had an overdose of PCP, an overdose. Does this mean there's a right amount we should be taking? <laughs> And the answer is no, you shouldn't take any because it's a real dangerous drug. But there's a lot of odd terminology in the newspapers, in the help wanted section, the employers always say, we're looking for a self-starter. <laughs> self-starter? I always picture some guy walking around with a key in his butt. I was walking around depressed about six months ago. I'd had this trouble with this girl, you know, because with me, women say stuff, and then I try to reply and be cool, and it always sounds real stupid. If I do it with you, I'll feel guilty. You won't feel very guilty. I'm not very good. <laughs> so my friends wanted to get me out of the house, you know, so they took me to a football game and played a trick on me that backfired. They put some kind of substance in my soda pop, and when it took effect, I got so paranoid, I thought 50,000 people, instead of watching the ball game, had turned around and were looking at me, 50,000 people. And I'm screaming, they're looking at me, they're looking at me. And they actually had to call the men in the white coats to come and get me out of there. Calm down, we're just taking you in for observation. Oh, just what I need, more people looking at me. <laughs> they took me to budget psychiatrist, three bucks a visit. Oh, you get what you pay for. <laughs> I'm threatening suicide. He's saying, you gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> I always get what I pay for. A couple years ago, I bought some of that discount insect killer. What a jip, what a weak product, boy. Had to catch the bugs by hand and then dip them in the stuff. <laughs> really enjoyed talking to you. Thank you very much. Thank you.
we'll uh, do a commercial. We'll be right back. Nice job. Very funny, George. Thank you very much. Let me ask you about Chip Flato. Yeah, Chip Flato's. Uh, Do you know Santa this guy? Uh, well, I know I'm going to work for him. Uh, have you ever worked for him before? No, I may not work for him after tonight, but yeah, I'm supposed to work for him. You, you wonder if a guy named Chip Flato, who owns a comedy club, would be watering drinks. You know, I don't know. You think he would be? I don't. Most of them do, you know. Oh, I can't imagine that. Well, you know say what they used to say. Typical uh... nightclub owner is Jack Ruby, so we can kind of go take it from there, I guess. <laughs> God. Huh? Uh, can I say first? I want to say hello to my friend MJ, who's recovering from surgery. That's How are you nice doing, MJ? Hope you get fine real soon. And because of uh, MJ's kind of bad health the last few weeks, I have been very health conscious, and I know you'll be proud of me. You don't know this. I am on the 19th day today of a fried pork fast. So, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. That's tough. Uh, all I've had 19 days is uh, fried pork and tap water, and I'm sick as a dog, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, aside from San Antonio, where, uh, where else have you been working? I, I know you travel the country. I, <laughs> extensively is the word you're looking for. Extensively. Yeah, uh, I went to uh, Crackers in Indianapolis. That's I know you nice dropped place. in there. You I dropped there. in there. Your niece, uh, you went back for, your niece got out of prison or something like that? Or, what was that? <laughs> What was it? What was it? It's kind of a work furlough kind of oh, deal. Oh, I yeah. see. Okay. And I know you were there the week earlier, and I was there, and I was working with a team. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of them called the, the Puny Boys. The Puny Boys. Yeah, the Puny Boys. Yeah. It's the kind of a team, you watch them for a couple minutes, and you think, uh, gee, I wonder when they're going to break up so they can fail individually. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> The Puny Boys. The Puny well, maybe, Boys, yeah. Maybe they'd be right for the show. Well, I'll, I'll certainly put yeah, in a good thank word. You. And uh, the second guy on the show, he was kind of an older fella. He did a lot of that, uh, the song parody on a queer day remember yeah, those guys yeah. and then he also <laughs> did <laughs> and he, yeah, yeah broadway show tunes and then he also did which i kind of irritated me he did audience participation which oh, is yeah. fine yeah. but he wanted everybody to, it was very well rehearsed and he wanted everybody to think it was off the top of his sure, head yeah. you know you know what, what do you want to talk about tonight any subjects anything i can connect with jokes i've been doing for 112 years uh -huh. right so that was no good and then howard taylor a guy that used to work I know howard, on sure. right used to work on your show, a good friend of mine. He came in for my opening, and he stayed around. And the, the, he's a great guy, but the guy is always on these kicks, these causes. And this time, it's the right to die. He's a great believer in the right to die. Prolonging the agony is morally wrong. Uh, a couple days later, he came down with a slight headache, so I snuffed him. <laughs> well, on that uplifting note, we'll pause here for a commercial. Keep those pledges coming in. We'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, Carrie, I want you to spend the next few days thinking about what almost happened here tonight. What? So just say good night. Good night. Thank you very much, Carrie. George, nice to see you. Good Thank luck you in Kansas much. City. Uh, we gotta go. Good night, folks. Next guest opens tomorrow night in Rochester, New York, at the Comedy Attic. But then all we all do. Uh, he's an extremely talented stand-up comedian. Please say hello to a very funny man, Mr. George Miller. Thank you. How are you? I am too. Where are y'all from? I am too. Okay. I was watching Practical Jokes the other night with Ed and Dick, and then Ed's got the baby picture, and he says, this, uh, this baby is now a famous movie star, and I'll tell you who it is right after this commercial. So I'm thinking, oh great, now I got two things to look forward to. Maybe an ad for a toilet bowl cleaner, and then which neurotic actor did this ugly infant grow up to be? <laughs> So then Dick comes on, and Dick thinks like he has to explain everything. You see the 900-pound gorilla in the middle of your TV screen? No, Dick, we missed that. But, uh... 
I was watching that program on PBS. It's on every week for elderly people, over easy, or it's almost over, or something like that. <laughs> Have you seen that? Well, they brought out the fact that some people take care of their aging parents or grandparents, and they do it, but it's kind of begrudgingly. Well, what do you want to do today, Maylock Slips? <laughs> I had old hecklers the other night. What do you say to old hecklers? Oh, yeah? Well, your purchasing power is dropping off. <laughs> Anytime I think of elderly people, I always think of my grandparents. They're real religious, fire and brimstone. You're not good, you're going to hell. I grew up fearing that. I gotta be good. Couldn't be a worse possible fate. But my attitude changed a few years ago. I saw that movie, The Exorcist. Remember the demon? The demon says something like, your mother does perverted acts in hell. I thought, well, maybe it's bad, but apparently they do have a recreation period. <laughs> Sometimes television thinks we're stupid. Primatine missed. The guy has bronchial asthma so bad he doesn't have enough breath left to blow out the match. So then he uses primatine mist, and then he can blow out the match. So get this medication. Either that or go like this with a match. <laughs> Oh, here's an old favorite. Why are people drinking Diet Coke? Because they're fat and thirsty. <laughs> I was doing a lot of traveling. I went to Las Vegas a couple months ago. I wasn't working over there, and I don't gamble, but I like to get a prime rib dinner for $1.23. <laughs> I've been watching what I eat, you know, I've been trying to get into shape. I get up every morning, I turn on the television, I do that 20-minute uh, workout, followed by the 40-minute buffet and the 10-hour nap. <laughs> I like to go shopping for food at the supermarket, but they're such nitpickers. They make all that money and they're so fussy, they got the six packs of the soda pop there in the cans and they're all stuck together and I don't want the whole thing, so I'll tear off one or two, right? They get real mad if you do that with bread. <laughs> I gotta do some irritations tonight. This is stuff that bothers me. I hope it bothers you. This happens to me every day of my life. Somebody calls me, I'm not there. They leave a message, I call them back, they're not there. I get their secretary or their answering service. I say, this is George, I'm returning Mr. Baker's phone call. They always say the same thing. Does Mr. Baker have your number? No, he called me the first time with a series of wild stabs. <laughs> Here's the irritation when people foul up your name, because I think names are very interesting. There's Ayatollah Khomeini, but sometimes they just refer to him as the Ayatollah. Is that kind of like the beaver? <laughs> <laughs> Diane was talking about blind dates. I don't like blind dates. I've had a couple in my life I wanted to tell you about them. One, the, the first one, this is a few years ago, and the lady was philosophizing. She kept talking. There are no bad experiences. There are only good experiences. If you have a bad experience, it's actually a good experience because you'll learn from it, and then you'll be stronger in the future. Do you know what I'm saying? I said, yeah, this horrible evening with you will pay off at a later date. <laughs> I shouldn't talk about women because when I'm in a doghouse, I'll say anything to get out. I'll be such a worm. Gee, honey, you know, this is silly. I don't even remember what we were fighting about. You pushed my parents off the Empire State Building. <laughs> yeah, I forgot all about that. Your mother really sailed, as I recall. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this friend of mine, he set me up with a blind date recently. He says, there's somebody I want you to meet. And I said, well, is she attractive? He says, well, she's very nice. Yeah, we know what that means. Babe, the blue ox is in town. <laughs> So I go over to her house, and ladies, I'm not a chauvinist, but boy, it was a double whammy because she was real obnoxious and had the widest mouth in the history of the world. She said, well, what are we going to do tonight? Oh, I don't know. Why don't we go bob for watermelons? <laughs> Enjoy talking to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.
very, it was very nice. We enjoyed your little comedy presentation. <laughs> thank very you nice. Very much. Where do you join your little show? Thank you very much. Where do you get your uh, Where do you get your ideas for your material? Well, you know, sometimes they almost uh, write themselves. I was looking in the newspaper, and now you have a thing on your uh, uh, show called uh, What is it? Hard Hard to Believe, or yeah, we have the yeah. Museum of the Hard to okay, Believe. Okay, I had I had a thing I saw in the Seattle paper called Little Known Facts. Mm -hmm. I think in the eastern part of the country it may be called Believe It or Lump It. It's uh -huh. a different thing, yeah. but it's actually the same thing. And I wrote little down filler some items. Little filler items, yeah. and they had about six of these, and I thought they were very interesting. These are actual facts, and I just thought maybe we could, uh, it's kind of an educational yeah. feature. Well, it's nice that you would jot them down. Thank you very much. Yeah. Did you, you make a guy feel right at home. Oh, good. Did you know, did you know, this applies no matter what your age, if you're driving in a parking lot that has speed bumps, and it's raining, mm -hmm. and you get behind an old person, when you get out of the parking lot, the majority of your life will be gone. <laughs> Jeez, that's, uh, that's fascinating. Little known fact, yeah, sometimes yeah. known as believe it or lump it. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Try to stay with what me. What on else this. do you have there? I, the, I got some other things. Yeah, I got some okay. other things. I don't want to get ahead Did of you. Did you know? Oh, <laughs> that'd be easy to do. Did you know that Henry? Remember the little bald-headed boy in the newspaper? Oh, sure. Henry in the yeah, funny the paper, kind of yeah. blank, never had yeah, anything to that's say. That's right. He grew up to be Eisenhower. No. <laughs> <laughs> Little known facts. Uh -huh. Try to stay with me on this. I'm okay. desperately trying yeah. to find a gimmick that'll shoot me to the top. <laughs> did you know, did you know, this is about sex among animals. <laughs> did you know that it's impossible for a turtle to have a quickie even if the other turtle's husband is coming back in just a few minutes. <laughs> George Miller will be at the Comedy Attic in uh, Rochester. And where else are you going to be? I'm going to be at, uh, let's see, the comedy, uh, comedy Workshop, I think it is, in Chicago, and the Comedy Castle in uh, Detroit, and all this in November. Thank you very much. And one more. I'm doing Tommy T's in Concord. You okay. got your own no, papers. We gotta, we gotta go here. We gotta go here. Uh, and also well, in November. Well, nice to have you back. Nice Good luck to you. Nice to we gotta go, folks. We'll be right back. Thanks, Paul. My next guest is a, a good friend of ours and an extremely funny human being. He can be seen in Chicago tomorrow through Sunday at a club called Who's On First. Please welcome funny man George Miller. Oh, George! Thank you very much. How are you? I am, too. Where are you all from? I am, too. Good. I just came in from Los Angeles on the plane. I think there should be a law against ugly people hugging and kissing at the airport. Having a look at this spoils everybody's trip. You know, a good trick to play on a flight attendant, when she brings around your dinner, stand up and yell, I didn't order this and I'm not paying for it. So I get back to New York and they put us up at the very popular Loud Maid Motel. I think the one thing everybody looks for in a first-class motel, plastic drinking glasses, especially when they've been bolted down and you have to slurp like a dog. <laughs> Last time I was here was around Christmas time, and I went to Seattle to visit relatives. I don't like visiting with relatives on Christmas and Christmas Eve. I hate taking pills two days in a row. <laughs> And by pills, I mean aspirin, because on TV they always say aspirin is smart, but bufferin is smarter. Well, the doctor gave me codeine. I must be a damn genius. <laughs> Christmas time in my family, I don't know if it's the same with you, it's will you be able to consume as much food as the next person? Can you eat what I eat? I don't come from a real close-knit family. At my dad's funeral, my mom and I left early to beat the rush. <laughs> hey, the kid I remember growing up was David Jackson. He was six years old and he weighed 400 pounds. You know how mean other kids can be? Fatty, fatty, two by four, can't get through the kitchen door. Which is not only mean, it was also inaccurate. Obviously, he'd been through the kitchen door thousands of times. <laughs> And his parents didn't do anything to discourage his fatness. He'd go home for lunch every day. His mom would fix him Lipton tub of soup. <laughs> Overeating, I guess, is not good. I smoke a lot, because I think it's healthy, because it makes me cough, and that's the only exercise I get. <laughs> Thank you. 
My mom would always say stuff that would make me feel insecure. On my 20th birthday, instead of saying happy birthday and all that, she had to bring out the fact that Charles Percy, the former senator from Illinois, when he was 20, he was the head of Bell & Howell Corporation. Can you see that, a 20-year-old kid? Yeah, we'll have a stockholders meeting at 10 o'clock. I'm flying to the coast at noon. I'll be meeting with the president of General Motors at 5 p.m. When I was 20, I was working at McDonald's. Uh, you want lids on these? <laughs> I gotta do some miscellaneous stuff today. Have you been reading that thing? Hands across the country, 10 million people are gonna join hands from the West Coast from, to the East Coast. What about the people in the mountains? This idea sucks! <laughs> oh, that's not necessary. You ever do this? You get out of the shower, you start to blow dry your hair, but after just a few seconds, you turn off the hair dryer, because it produces some kind of a noise which makes you think you heard the phone ring. <laughs> if that has never happened to you, it will now. And here's something I've always wondered. You know those four little knobs at the base of your toilet, two in back, two in front? What the hell are those things and how come they're always loose and dirty? And why is that brown stuff always on them and how did it get down there? <laughs> I have my favorite Dear Abby letter of all time. Just in case you've never read Dear Abby, she writes a column for a lot of morons from around the country who can't solve their own problems. They write in and seek advice from this one central moron. It's a wonderful column. <laughs> I'm just kidding, she's not really a moron. Do you think a moron knows that's what he's called? If he's watching television and somebody uses that word, does he kind of perk up a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> this is from a John Smith. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. <laughs> It's kind of a dramatic letter. I'll try to read it dramatically. Dear Abby, I work in a sewer. Because the work is so depressing, I started taking diet pills. I got hooked. My life was a living hell. Then one night, with God's help and all the courage I could muster, I flushed those horrible pills down the toilet once and for all. But the next day, when I went back to work in the sewer, there they were again. <laughs> Enjoyed talking to you. Thank you very much. See you. you look great. Can I do my plugs first? Because I always forget. Oh, I'll no. be at the San Antonio Comedy Club oh, on Chip March Flato Chip again. Flato mm -hmm. again. Yeah, March fifth through the ninth, and De Anza College on March fourteenth at the Chip Flint Flato. Center. Now, what kind of uh, club owner is Chip Flato? He's kind of like Jack Ruby. Crooked. I told you that before. Yeah, yeah. 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 A weasel. You find club he owners to, are mostly do, weasels. He wants to do a. Well, no, there are some weasels. If you ever want to play comedy clubs, I'm sure no chance of that. But if you ever do, <laughs> I know the ones that are good and the weasels also. Uh -huh. so There's one guy in Syracuse, the Booker. R not too bright. Wants to take one a day vitamins, but he can't figure out the dosage. So that'll give you an idea of what we're dealing with here. Okay. So I know you're always looking for a gimmick. Uh, that that book that's going to shoot you to start. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, my friend Herman Bursky first told me to do that. So I talked it over with my. Do you know my alleged manager, Mike Venema? I don't believe we've met. Mike is not all there. His connecting rod was severed many years ago. Uh -huh. He's my manager. He likes for both of us to get into costume and pretend that I'm Elvis and he's Colonel Parker. So that'll <laughs> give you an idea of what we're dealing with. Well, that's not a bad idea. What I did was. <laughs> Wait a minute, what's wrong show? with that idea? Well, nothing, because it used to be John and Bo Derrick, and that was even worse, <laughs> so you gotta... <laughs> Now, I know you used to sell encyclopedias. No, no, no. I want to do little-known facts. This oh, is my I'm latest sorry. gimmick. We started this last time. We're still on gimmicks. Think. This is true stuff. These are not jokes. We proved that last time. <laughs> this is stuff. This, remember, you had what? Hard to believe. Believe it or lump it. Right. Little-known facts. Little Did known you facts. know that 54% of all the men, women, and children in this country have at one time or another killed their barber? Did you know? Did you know that Pavarotti, Beverly Sills... Caruso, all those great singers, early in their careers, all recorded Hats Off to Larry. Yeah, that one I knew. You remember that yeah, one? Do you remember I, that? I remember that, yeah. Okay. yeah. One more. No, you, it's, no, it's time for encyclopedias now. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We've got more, no more time. Oh, no more time. You should have gone right to encyclopedias. I should have got, yeah, yeah, I should have got with that, right? Well, nice to see you. Nice Very to see funny. you. Thank you. Uh, we'll do a commercial here. <laughs> Nice 
nice job, George. Nice to see you again. You'll nice be in Chicago you. tomorrow night at the uh, Who's on First? Who's on First? My thanks to Terry Garland, Ed Woodard. Tomorrow night, folks. Oh, what luck. Marv Albert will be here. Uh, also, Glenn Close and Robert Palmer, Stupid Petrix. Have a nice night. Thank you very much. Good night. Next guest is a, a very funny gentleman who can be seen starting tomorrow at the Cleveland Comedy Club and then on May 13th through the 17th in the Grin Room in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. A good friend of mine, a very funny gentleman. Please welcome comedian George Miller. George! Look good. How you been? Thank you. Did you mention also that I'll be at the Tulsa Comedy Club on Memorial Day weekend yeah, and the Akron Canton Comedy Comedy Club on June 25th? Get Thank those you. plugs out of the way, right? Up, yeah. Up I think you probably forgot yeah, those yeah. plugs. Uh, now you've been very busy, I you know, working all over the country. Yeah, I've been pretty busy. And you know what happened? I don't know. I was going to ask you about this because these people they wanted me to do this comedy album. They wanted yeah. me to do a contract. And I was asking you and everybody, had you ever heard of Ronco Records before? Oh yeah, I've seen them advertised. Yeah. Yeah. I was a little bit apprehensive. I think it's maybe kind of a screwed up company because I know a few years ago I bought one of their records on their label. You uh -huh. know, it was uh, Beethoven's Fifth Symphony oh, in classical. C minor. Yeah. 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 But then on the flip side, they had Beans, Beans, the musical fruit. Yeah. So I was uh, <laughs> you were a little bit concerned. You were skeptical. A little bit yeah. concerned. You know what I really wanted to do, though? You want to what? I well, because I haven't booked up pretty good and we're working on this cable thing. Cable show. What I wanted to do, and I didn't get to do it, it's kind of, <coughs> excuse me, I'm out of breath. Disappointed. Um, I want to do that comedy relief thing. I know oh, you yeah. were on it. Yeah. You were on, they, uh, they raised uh, money for the homeless. Paul right. And the I and Chris. Yeah. You guys were on, yeah. on last. Now yeah. you know how I feel. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> then, uh, you know the guy I noticed on that show is that guy that Bob Goldwaith. Uh, Bob Goldwaith. Yeah, I work with him a lot. Goldwaith. How do you say it? Goldthwait. Gold. Yeah, you almost got to be retarded to say that name. <laughs> No, he's a real nice guy. I know him from the comedy store in L.A., and I really noticed him on his show because he comes out, and first of all, they introduced him as Bobcat. 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 Yeah. And then That's he came out, yeah, and then he acted like a retarded person, like he always a mentally retarded person. And then he told jokes while he was taking a shower. Right. So I started thinking, maybe Bob should try to get a gimmick. <laughs> I was thinking, though, you know, just a thought. Yeah, the straight-ahead approach right. is obviously not working. Maybe a little something peculiar. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So I was thinking, like, the connection between comics and people who are hungry. Uh -huh. So I was thinking, and I think I told you this before years ago, what if we were on the barter system, no money exchanged, and then a comic would go into a grocery store to buy a loaf of bread. Uh -huh. You remember this? Yeah. So, uh, have a loaf of bread. Okay, that'll be one joke, please. Yeah, all right, uh, there was a farmer, he had a daughter. Uh, wait a minute, I heard that one already. Oh, yeah, like I never tasted bread before. <laughs> <laughs> so now when you, when you travel around, you look like you may be one of the I members of... I more on that. You look like... <laughs> You uh, uh, you travel around to eat in a lot of odd places. I know you're very particular about where I you I had eat. these dinner dates. I'll tell you about these dinner dates. I was in Glendale. You ever been to the Halloween Hut in Glendale? Glendale, California? Yeah, yeah. Ever Halloween, been to Halloween Hut? No. Yeah, it's all, it's all uh, Halloween themed. Yeah. And the waiters and the waitresses, <laughs> they all wear these masks. Yeah. And it's like, you know, you're getting bad service, but you don't know from whom. Uh -huh. And uh, <laughs> so I'm with this, this lady, this, I can't say girl, i got to say no, lady. lady right? yeah. yeah, this lady. And uh, she had good etiquette. She knew just the right way to hold her fork yeah. so her entire rib steak could stay on it. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so then I run into her again last night in New York. And uh, so she says, let me, because I paid for that bill. And she said, let me repay, and we'll go to a, a health food restaurant. Yeah. And I didn't have any way out. I didn't want to go to the health food restaurant, but I did. And we're looking at the menu, and she said, oh, doesn't looking at this menu make you hungry? Uh -huh. I said, oh, yeah, that bean curd is really calling my name. <laughs> so, calling your name. Yeah, calling yeah. I don't, bean curd, no, is that something like that goats is. give it, but they don't really want to? I don't know what it is, that bean curd. It's some horrible thing. And so... <laughs> Then uh, after dinner, she's uh, saying that we should do something different. And yeah, I, yeah I do something different. So I took her down to Tattoos Against Your Will yeah. down on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I go to uh, quite a bit. Yeah. Now, now so. you mentioned uh, Bob Goldthwait and a gimmick and so forth. Right. I know you're you're kind of looking for a Constantly gimmick. Constantly so. looking for a gimmick, yeah. something that'll shoot me to the top. Last time I came on your show, I presented little known facts, and no one cared about that. Yeah. That bombed completely. Yeah. 
So what I'm doing now is, you know, I've always had a chunk in my act about irritations, stuff that bothers me. Things so, that annoy you, yeah. Yeah, so now I'm going to try to become the bothered comedian. Like George a, Miller, the bothered, the bothered comic. comedian. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah kind of trite, but well, I how, thought I'd try it. How would that work? Uh, well, I was thinking, uh, just to list the irritations, the stuff that bothers me, like I'm really sick of celebrities who go on TV and talk about the fact they had a, they describe something as a clarifying uh -huh. experience. Yeah. I don't know about you, I don't want any clarifying experiences. <laughs> I want my life to remain a fog-filled hell. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it when I look at the movie page. I'm really disgusted with the movie page. I look at it, and this actual movie, Wanda Whips Wall Street. It just, oh, my, how many more of these sadomasochistic stock exchange pictures is the public going to tolerate? <laughs> I didn't care for that. And I hate it when, uh, this is not a joke. This is, well, some of the others weren't either. But this is, David Horowitz, and I hate it when anything is just too stupid. David Horowitz, this is a single stupid thing, the most stupid thing I've ever heard. David Horowitz in L.A. on the news said there's some people in Texas who are suing the police department, okay? Because on television, the police say, if you have an emergency, dial 911. Right. These people apparently had an emergency. They say they couldn't dial 911. You know why? They couldn't find 11 on the phone <laughs> dial. <laughs> Guys who just continually talk about their... We can't talk about drugs on TV. No. I have a friend. All he talks about, drugs, drugs. He takes... I said, look. I give him a lecture. I said, yeah. drugs is not the answer. Life is the answer. Life. Take a look around. Right. you got to stop and snort the roses. No. <laughs> no. One more thing. I'm the bothered comedian. Yeah. Oh, I'm, that's I'm, right. Am I yelling? Yeah. I... <laughs> People who always are negative. You gotta oh, be I positive. I, oh, oh. Yeah, oh, I know you do. Right. <laughs> you, got, you gotta be positive. Any situation you can make positive. Jim Fix, the great runner. Sure. He died. died. He had a heart attack while he's jogging. Terrible tragedy. He's I felt 50. bad. But you gotta look on the bright side. Maybe Richard Simmons will be next. <laughs> it's George Miller, ladies and gentlemen, the bothered comic. The bothered comic. Well, uh, Hotel accommodations for most guests of Late Night with David Letterman furnished by the Berkshire Place and Omni Classic Hotel in exchange for this announcement. For reservations at Omni Hotels in the U.S. and Europe, call toll-free 800-THE-OMNI. Okay, we're out of time. George, nice to see you. Thank give you very give much. my best to the Von Trapps. Um, also, my thanks to Jack Hanna and uh, Tony Bennett, of course, who was here earlier. Arthur Polizzi, you'll be here tomorrow, one. Nice to have you here, Arthur. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow with Mac O'Grady and uh, Sybil Shepherd. Good night, everybody. medication. Hey there. You doing your own special, Paul? <laughs> My next guest is a good friend and a terrific comedian who can be seen in person at the Richmond Comedy Club in Virginia on July 11th and the 12th. He is also, believe it or not, the subject of a PBS documentary that is being filmed even as we speak tonight. Please say hello to a very funny man, Mr. George Miller. George! How you doing? Good. Can I do one more plug? Sure. I'm at the new South Atlantic. No, wait a minute. The South <laughs> in, in South Atlanta at the. Uh, the new, you screwed new, uh, up the wait plug. A minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. And it's the new um, uh, slapstick comedy. I'm working for for Chris DePetta. For, oh, Chris yeah, DePetta. For 11 yeah. bucks a show. So I'm yeah. very. That's why I got excited. I Good for you. How are you still doing? looking? Uh, still looking for a gimmick? The last time you were here? Still looking for a gimmick. What happened was, now the first time I was doing this a few months ago, you recall, I came on, I had little known facts. Mm -hmm. And I presented some of those, and no one was interested in mm -hmm. that. 
So then the next time I came on, I was the bothered comic. Bothered comic. Yeah, that worked a little bit better. And now I have something new tonight. What has happened, though, it's kind of a phenomena, mm -hmm. is what has happened is that looking for a gimmick has become the gimmick, and that's not working either. Oh, that's not working? Yeah, out. but I would like to do a couple, I wanted to try a couple new little-known facts just to give it one last uh -huh. chance. Did uh -huh. you know the three most asked questions in this country? The three most asked yeah, questions? Yeah, this is almost like a little top ten list. Yeah. Number three, how you doing? All right. Number two, how are you? The number one most asked question in this country didn't you used to play the Green Hornet on radio? <laughs> Jeez. Would you have guessed no, that? No, you know, that would have been yeah. way down on my well, list. Well, no, these, these are not jokes. That's number as, one. As I proved the last time. <laughs> these are actual little-known yeah. facts. Uh -huh. Did you know, I always start out with, do you know? Uh -huh. Sure. 98% of all the Visine used in this country runs down the side of your face. <laughs> See, I would not have guessed that either. Well, anyway, Little Known Facts is dead, and now I'm the socially conscious So from comedian. now on, you're the so socially, George Miller, the, the socially, socially conscious, conscious comedian. comedian. Yeah, uh, my Hollywood friends and I are concerned about a number of things. Uh. And I, want, uh. <laughs> I wanted to talk now, first of all, about Hands Across America, because uh -huh. it happened about six weeks ago, and I'm as fresh as today's headlines. Yeah. And uh, you recall, months ago when this thing was first announced, I kind of summarized the thing. Millions of people joining hands from the West Coast to the East Coast, but what about people in the mountains? This idea sucks! <laughs> Remember that? Yeah. yeah. Kenny DeGardner had already used suck, so that kind of uh, that, took yeah. away from that. Yeah, watered down that, yeah. that uh, magic piece okay. of comedy. So we, get, so, <laughs> <laughs> so we, got, we got hands across. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Reagan got in at the last minute. They joined hands That's on right. the White House lawn. Yeah. Boy, they really put themselves out, didn't they? <laughs> right. And they say that there are... Uh, they say that there are two million people in this country who are hungry every day. All right. And I think that's absolutely true. Hell, I'm hungry right now. <laughs> <laughs> I was, uh, I was uh, not, I did not participate in Hands Across America. I was very active in Fingers Across Paramus uh -huh. a few months ago. And we raised 36 bucks, which was enough to feed a fat vagrant for about 11 minutes. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> yeah, it was the best I could the do. The socially conscious the comedian. The socially George conscious yeah. comedian. I was also asked to contribute to Farm Aid. Farm Aid? Unfortunately, I'd spent all my money on Bar Maid. Bar Maid. So yeah. that, uh, <laughs> that did not. <laughs> so I am the socially conscious yeah. comedian. Now, this is uh, pretty exciting. You have uh, people not here. Not so far, it's not. People, <laughs> people here from uh, uh, PBS doing a documentary. PBS doing a documentary. Following you all around, aren't they? All over the country. Gets and on I, your nerves, doesn't it, having gets, those guys back right there? Uh, they were also want to talk to you after the show because you haven't been interviewed quite enough. Yeah. And uh, so uh, what I want to do now is uh, get some laughs, actually. <laughs> what I want to do now is uh, for some people who will not be seeing the PBS thing, because everybody can't see it, I kind of like to summarize a typical day in my life just well, in case I think it's going to be very interesting. All right. All right. First of all, I get up every day. I kind of have a philosophy. Forget about yesterday. That was in the past. Don't worry about tomorrow. That's in the future. Right. Just live each day in the present. Live each day to its fullest. Sure. Then I go back to bed. <laughs> I get up a few hours later, and I'm always contemplating suicide. This particular day, I was <laughs> contemplating suicide. But I decided against it because I decided that I want to live long enough to read one more article about Danny DeVito. Uh -huh. <laughs> So I no no suicide today. I call up my friend Herman Bursky. Yeah. Herman Bursky, a little bit peculiar. I think you know Herman. I, I've met Herman. A little bit odd. He's a world traveler. He happened to be an unfortunate situation. Mm -hmm. One of the Iranian hostages. Sure. And they kept him over there for I think it was the, what 15 months. Mm -hmm. When they finally let him go, Herman stayed over there a couple extra days so he could see the city. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that is There's strange. something wrong. Yeah. yeah. All right, listen, we're going to do a commercial. I got here. more typical All day right, stuff. We'll come back. I'm we're a socially a conscious comedian. We'll, we'll come you know. back and we'll uh, continue this fascinating chat with George Miller. He's a socially conscious comedian. Okay, now, uh, any, anything else to tell you about in your typical, typical day? day? All yeah. right, there's always phone calls. Sure. So I get a call from my mom, who mm -hmm. I just visited recently, and she always has guidance in the form of expressions. Mm -hmm. The latest is, uh, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Sure. Yeah, right, Mom, but do you have anything for the wimpy? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, that. And then uh, she puts me on the phone with, uh, with my nephew, who's uh -huh. uh, kids today. What's his day. name? What's his name nephew? is Lester. Lester. Lester, yeah, yeah, he's in the fifth grade, and... Uh, <laughs> 
The kids today got smart mouths on them. This kid, oh, yeah. they got an old maid school teacher, fifth grade. They call her Miss 7-Up. Uh -huh. Never had it, never will. <laughs> <laughs> so then it's time. Then it's time for uh, mindless errands. I get oh, in my yeah. car, get in my car, it. drive around, pick up debris from the freeway for a couple hours, <laughs> and then it's uh, on to the uh, the airport for late lunch at the uh, airport snack bar. Uh -huh. I have the hot dog out there, which is a great dining experience. I think I'm going to start eating all my meals standing up, facing a wall. <laughs> yeah. So then I uh, I hurry on home rather quickly, and I'm I live close to Santa Monica Boulevard, of course. Sure. And uh, so as I'm I'm driving home, I see a couple of gay guys walking. Along. I know they were gay because they both had mustaches and receding hairlines. Uh -huh. That's how you tell. Yeah. yeah, if you're sitting close to somebody with a mustache and receding hairline, tell them we know now and it's okay. <laughs> I, had, I had been warned, you know, when I left to Seattle, my hometown, watch yourself. You were you, warned. You, yeah, I was warned. About watch that. yourself when you get to California, a very large gay community. Oh, yeah. So I always overreact. My first day I'm in town, I'm in a restaurant, this guy right there kind of giving me the eye. I thought, well, maybe he's like that. If he says anything, I'm not going to waste any time. I'll come right out and ask. Oh, so yeah. I'm chewing, and he's looking, and I'm chewing, and he's looking. And finally, he says, say, would you please pass me the salt? I said, yeah, here you go. Are you gay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he said, no. Do they use a lot of salt? <laughs> <laughs> so that would be a typical day. Yeah. I just kind of summarize it forever. Yeah. Now, um, did, did you? Um, <laughs> to who? Have you, have, did, did you do any uh, shooting while you're in Seattle? Visiting we did a little mom? shooting up With there. The yeah. Yeah. I had a little shooting up there, and I had a blind date. I want to tell you about this. Mm -hmm. And this friend of mine set me up, and I was really a little reluctant to go. And he said, she's a nice girl. Her name is Mandy. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, yeah, she came and she gave without taking. He said, yeah. yeah, that's her. That's yeah. the same one. <laughs> so I, uh, I, I go over there, and I think this lady, uh, I don't want to make snap judgments. I think this, this woman was from the, uh, the PLO. Oh, PLO? Uh, yeah, yeah, that stands for probably lesbian. Oh. <laughs> Uh, okay. And uh, uh, is there any more time for No, we're just about oh, done. Right. You're going to be uh, in uh, yeah, I was just the, Richmond, kinda, the Richmond the Richmond Comedy Club in Virginia there the end there. <laughs> on, on July 11th and 12th. Yeah, this 11th and 12th. Are you being paid Friday to wear this? No, this is almost like this is a show in Seattle, right? Good for you, Thank George you very Miller, much. ladies and gentlemen, and we'll be right back. Oh, we're back. We ran out of time, and I'm sorry. My apologies to Kurt Saxon, who was going to be here and show us some things to do with chemistry. Uh, my thanks to uh, George Miller and Elise Beasley, and of course, our good friend uh, Olaf over there at TAS. We'll see you tomorrow, folks. Thank you very much. Good night. guest tonight is a uh, terrific comedian, and he also claims to be a close friend of mine. He can be seen in person on October 10th and 11th in Minneapolis at the Carlton Backstage. Please say hello now to George Miller. I bounced out. What's yeah. going on? You know, I just saw on the screen there, it said you were desperately looking for I'm, a gimmick. Yeah, I'm still looking for my gimmick. Uh, can I do one thing first? Do I whatever gotta, you like. I got to wish my mom a happy birthday because I forgot to send a card. Uh -huh. And, uh, yeah, well, you know, my, my dad, my mom I always got along with. My dad, we always hassled. And I was like uh, kind of an obnoxious teenager, right? Uh -huh. And I remember I went through that, what do you call it, the philosophical phase. Ever go through one of those philosophical yeah. phases? I said, Dad, I said, the past is just a memory. The future's in your imagination. All we really have is the present. Yeah. He said, then why don't you shut your face right now? Yeah. <laughs> that was your philosophical face. That was my philosophical face, yeah. 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 But my mom, I always got along with it. It's funny, the stuff you remember when you were a little kid. I know you've all heard this expression before. I first heard it when I was a little kid. Somebody said, I want something. And my mom says, people in hell want ice water, but they're not getting it either. Sure. <laughs> I got confused. I thought hell must be like Denny's. It's hard to get ice water. <laughs> so, Thanks for uh, letting me do that. Yeah, I, I did appreciate forget my that. card. Yeah. 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 And, and you're, you're I'm still... trying to have better posture now. Yeah. Yeah. My yeah. posture's always screwed up. And, and you're still looking for a gimmick, you say? I'm desperately looking for a gimmick. I'll review this. Uh, a couple shows ago, I was the... The bothered comic. Right. And there's a lot of things that still bother me. For instance, I don't like it when guys brag about their temper. Hey, when I get mad, you don't want to be around. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be around when he's delighted. <laughs> I hate it when guys, no matter what, no matter what the subject, hi Paul, 
No matter what the subject, they get it back to sex. Yeah. Hey, did you feel the earthquake this morning? Yeah, I felt the earthquake in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> you know guys like that? There's guys like that. Oh, yeah, I'll take like your word that. for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I... <laughs> Wait, there's more stuff that bothers me. I get bothered when I read certain stuff. I read this article that says your car reflects your personality. Right. Now, I got kind of depressed. I don't have a car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Then I got real paranoid for a couple days because of that article, and uh, I went out walking around one night, and I heard somebody giving me the finger. So I, <laughs> something was wrong. Yeah, yeah was, you need uh, help. I need you a little help. Yeah, I heard that. So I was the bothered comic for a while, uh -huh. and then I became the last uh, uh, show I did with you. I was the uh, socially conscious That's comic. Right. Remember? Yeah. And because my Hollywood friends and I have been very concerned <laughs> about a number of things, <laughs> and uh, so I went up to, <laughs> I went up to. Uh, I went up to Squirt, Washington, where I used to live. I used to live up in Squirt, and I did a telethon in... Well, you're really going along with this. Sir. And I did a telethon, not a major telethon. Uh -huh. We were trying to raise money for people who weren't feeling too good that day. Yeah. So it wasn't the best telethon well, that's, that's in the world. That's uh, an honorable yeah. uh, intention, I so, think. So, thank you. Yeah. And so what's happened is, of course, uh, looking for the gimmick has... Uh, that has become the gimmick. Mm, it's yeah. kind of like something you told me one time. You take one thin idea and you kind of beat it to death yeah. with a stick. That's right. So, so now, uh, uh, I understand you have a plan uh, have tonight a plan. that you're going to unveil to yeah, try and... Yeah, I thought and, uh, it was a card... Hey, oh, is my ball spot showing? You know, because uh, uh, my my friend uh, he told me something about I was wondering I was losing a little hair and uh -huh. I was wondering if that trend was going to continue, and how do you tell? And somebody said, well, is your father's father bald? Uh -huh. And I said, yeah, I think so. He's been dead since 1953, so I'm pretty sure. That... <laughs> it seems like it might happen. Now, yeah, there it is. Right? I thought it was underneath the right, chair. No, it's right over yeah, here. right. Just, just relax. So there what we're do. doing? What we're doing is. Uh, this is not a contest, though, because NBC says you it's can't have... It's not a contest. No, right. you, know, you have to do it. It's claim right N there, NBC too. has nothing to do nothing with this. Nothing to do with this, no. And there's and, no uh, payment There's involved. no payment at all. No, no payment. No and responsibility. No, no I am offering, if somebody can send... I'll hold this up in a second. And uh, if somebody can give me a good gimmick, I will, I will send them absolutely free a can of Hormel chili. That's the only thing involved. Okay, that's the only thing involved. Well, you used to give away sponges, so you have no right to laugh. A can of chili? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a can of Hormel chili. There are rules for the contest uh -huh. for the gimmick, and that NBC employees and their family right. are el not eligible, because we don't think they'd have very good ideas to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what else? Oh, and no smart aleck gimmicks like try to get funny i don't want to hear any of that and uh i will be announcing the winner i guess whenever the hell i feel like it okay so and it, uh, this is uh yeah, right here. Let me hold this up yeah just claim okay. that thing too no nbc has no responsibility there no. is no payment right did you print this up you have a lovely no. hand that's well, very I didn't nice do that <laughs> it was one of your staff. george miller care right. of gimmick gimmick yeah box 230 6520 selma now that's your home isn't it is that, that is your my home, home? yeah but you i live didn't, there, I don't didn't you? want anybody to know that well yeah. no but if people are going to be driving by now i know, I know that I well know you should have gotten a real post office box because i couldn't afford it i had no money thugs are going to drive by and taunt you well at least it'll be somebody <laughs> Hollywood, California. Here it is again. Care of Gimmick Box 230, 6520. Listen, you may laugh, Hollywood, but I mean, and I got to do something. Uh, next month, I'm 68 years old, and if, <laughs> if this don't work, I'm going to have an eye job and try to get on Star Search. Yeah, so I got to, I got to, I got to do now, something. Are you going to try out a gimmick for us tonight? Tonight, I'm the in the news comic. In the news. I'm as fresh as today's headline. <laughs> yeah. uh, we had, uh, <laughs> we had Merv Griffin. I felt kind of bad about this. Uh, he had a long, his last, successful career. He had a long, yeah. successful career. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a couple months ago, no, about a month ago was his last show. One of his last shows he had on uh, Mariette Hartley and Ava Gabor. Right. And you wonder why he went off the air. What a mystery. And then <laughs> sodomy has been ruled illegal by the Supreme Court. Oh, I think we can all sleep a lot better now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, I guess you could just think about that. You could be convicted of sodomy and then sent to prison uh -huh. where you could do it some more. <laughs> Wait. Why are they haunting me? Well, I was thinking like your first <laughs> your first day in prison for sodomy. It's like, you know, the preliminaries are over and here comes the main event. <laughs> so, and what else? Anything oh, else there? Richard Miller, the convicted spy, he got, what was it? Two life terms plus 50 years yeah. plus a $60,000 fine. Mm -hmm. And he better pay that fine or he's going to be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> And uh, and you had uh, Bob Dylan is making a movie. He's going to yeah. play an aging rock star. Gee, what a stretch! 
And the kid, the kid was like 13, and she snitched on her parents for having the drugs. Oh, that's right, they were. And yeah, yeah and they were in, in jail for a while. And I kept thinking they're not going to be there forever. Talk about wait till I get you home. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, you know, because because Reagan got the all-out thing on the drug yeah. on the drug war now, yeah. and uh, so I did. You read about that uh, murder trial in uh, I think it was on the West Coast, and they figured that every member of the jury had been doing something because they deliberated for six days and found the defendant tall. Is that right? You know, I didn't, I didn't read that. Yeah, That's yeah. That, well, I, I only get a selective newspaper. <laughs> and I had, well, you know, I'll tell you something funny. <laughs> I, well, it's uh, about yeah, the old thing goes, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I went to California. I didn't know people were so stupid <laughs> that they would actually spend all their money on drugs and they would, I didn't know the drug terminology. No. And I said to yeah. somebody, I said, uh, what'd you do on your vacation? And the guy says, I said, where did you go on your vacation? Sure. And the guy said, <laughs> the guy said, up my nose. Uh -huh. I said, damn, who is your travel agent? Because, uh... There's something wrong there. There's something, <laughs> something wrong, there. Yeah. wrong there. Anything else you want to mention? Everything good in your Let life right Let me see. Right now? Oh, I got plugs. Are we almost done? I, I don't know. Are we almost done? Just about done. We got the Comedy Company in Tulsa, October 23rd, 24th, 25th. And myself and Jeff Altman, who's going to be on Altman. the show on Thursday. It'll be yeah. a great show. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. We're going to be in uh, Denver. Denver. i got to get these easy Denver at the Comedy Works on October 12th. And Raleigh, uh, North Carolina at Charlie Goodnight's on Charlie Goodnight. yeah, yeah. November yeah. 16th. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. This this is part of a state trooper outfit, isn't it? This was. Yeah, I got this from a guy in the back. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Well, good luck with your gimmicks, George. Thank you very Let much. Let us know I what happens. That. Nice to okay, see you again. Nice to see you. We'll, we'll do a commercial and be back here with the rolling. But see, I think when you're in that position, you, you want something pressing on your organs. Now, uh, my next guest is a, a very funny gentleman who can be seen in person on December 12th through the 14th at Chip Flato's San Antonio Comedy Club. As always, it's a pleasure to welcome to this show George Miller. George. <laughs> Pretty good. My heart's always beating real fast. Why is that? Because I'm alive. Uh -huh. uh, Chip Flato, San Antonio Comedy Club. What kind of guy is this fellow? Uh, he's a guy, he's uh, kind of a chintzy guy. He's a nice guy, yeah. but he's kind of economical. He, uh, like he would never tip in, in a restaurant. Well, I take that back. One time, a, a waitress somehow saved his life, and he left... 15 cents, mm -hmm. something like that. <laughs> and he, this was a long time ago, of what, course. did she Heimlich him? I don't remember. I think she recommended he not eat the corned beef sandwich. I don't know what it was. It was, it was uh, I see. Menu recommendation or something like that. And uh, he would, like, he goes out of town, he would never stay at a motel. He actually has curvature of the spine from sleeping in satellite dishes. Oh. I'll give you an so idea. Very, yeah. yeah. Very, very, yeah. very economical, uh -huh. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's, that's the uh, kind of a guy he is. Yeah. Next question. Yeah. How was your, uh, how's your holiday season? Have you been up to Seattle? I went to Seattle. I went up there. I saw my friend Herman Bursky, who I often mention in the show. Uh, Herman, of course, has had a terrible allergy problem for like 20 didn't years. Yeah, that. didn't yeah, really? No. Yeah, he has an allergy problem where he's, you know, wheezing and sneezing and, and blowing his nose. After 20 years, they finally found out what he's allergic to, Kleenex. There you go. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> I tell you, these doctors, Dave, my Hollywood friends and I have been very concerned about quite a few of them. <laughs> it's a wonderful age we're living in, isn't it? Is. It is. And yeah. I saw mom, of course. How's mom doing? Well, I'll tell you, we're not a close-knit family. I yeah. mentioned this on the show a few months ago. We're not a close-knit family. At my dad's funeral, my mom and I left early to beat the rush. <laughs> 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 that's not true. I said that a few months. That's not true. My, yeah. my dad's alive. He's in the hospital right now. His pound cake backed up on him, but he is alive. <laughs> pound cake I have no up idea what that means. I yeah. got a laugh one night. I kept yeah, it in for a couple in. Sure, of months. Leave it in. Pound yeah. cake backed up. I don't, yeah. know what it, I don't know what I'm talking about. My mom, of course, always gives uh, uh, words of advice, constant words. Happiness comes from the inside, yeah, right? Yeah. Which, right, Mom? That's why you always feel better after you puke. <laughs> yeah. Right? You gotta think about some of these, you know? You gotta think about some of these. Uh, and, uh... And not too long. Yeah. Now, how was, how was the last time you were on, you were looking for a gimmick? Oh, right? I was desperately yeah. looking for a gimmick. Something will shoot me to the top. And, and you had people write in with the... Well, yeah, we had uh, people write in. I had one idea, though. The last time I was on the show, I talked about, and this, this ties in here, uh, we talked about, uh, and the band laughed at this a lot, too, maybe they could identify guys who 
no matter what the subject is, they get it back to sex. Right. Hey, did you feel the earthquake this morning? Yeah, I felt the earthquake in my pants. <laughs> Hi, Paul. <laughs> I'm like you. I like to refer to Paul about 80 times a minute. Yeah. So, anyway, then we were thinking. See, we started talking. Somebody said, hey, you're, you're the in-the-pants comedian. Maybe in that the, would oh, be... Yeah, yeah but not yeah. sexually. We no. were thinking maybe you could use it as like a skeptical, um, if you were skeptical of something, somebody was uh, trying to hand you a load of nonsense. Yeah. Sinatra, hey, I've known Frankie for 25 years. Oh yeah, you know Sinatra, in my pants. Uh -huh. And it would catch on, <laughs> see, like, remember you had, uh, well, you had a thing a couple years ago, you wanted to make a trademark, uh, they pelted us with rocks and rocks garbage. And garbage yeah, so I yeah. thought this would be at least equally, yeah. As, yeah. So I just thought of that, okay, yeah. that was. Uh, the other thing was, I was thinking, I saw you do the, the James Stewart impression last night. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Not well, a very good impression. No, I actually, I thought it was pretty good. But uh, I was thinking maybe I should do more of that sort of thing, maybe singing and dancing mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So I was thinking in, in that uh, context, you had the, the terrorists a few months ago were talking about uh, they were going to start doing things in the United States. Mm -hmm. Remember that? And they mentioned department stores, which would be kind of scary. You'll run for your life. At Sears. <laughs> Very nice. Not bad. Very nice. Not bad. Well, let me do this. We have to do a commercial here. We'll I do got a, more, though. We'll do a commercial, and then oh, uh, we'll be right back. Don't worry. It's all right. Stay. How's your dating life? Anything, well, I had this uh, blind now? date, and I had this blind... I mentioned... I started this story the, uh, two shows ago. I'll yeah. start it again. I think the lady was from the PLO. I'm pretty sure she was... Yeah, that stands for probably lesbian. Oh! <laughs> remember that? Yeah, remember, yeah. I started this story. Yeah. I do remember that. Well, she seemed a little masculine. We bought some potato chips, and she <laughs> tore them open with her teeth, uh -huh. which I think is a little bit... Uh, and they were Pringles, so I was pretty sure that something was going on. The can there. It was in the can, right, right. Through the can. Yeah, we don't have to explain these. <laughs> she was one of the... She, she, she was... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We're coming close. Oh, we're very close. Five seconds. Five seconds. Oh. Okay. Oh, oh, Thank, you. Thank right. you very Thank much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Alcohol. Howard <laughs> Vinitsky and his sound effects. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so, <hold on. laughs> Great. We have achieved oh, oh, 360 degrees. Complete image revolution. Everyone involved in tonight's experiment will receive a lovely plaque. Oh, that's... that's She's an annoying <laughs> <dude>. <laughs> Paul well, Anderson, you have a little song to commemorate the evening. <laughs> Thank you. Here's a little tribute to uh, a little adventure that we've shared and sort of what we've learned along the way. An incredible journey inside your TV. Was it all too real? Or just some nutty fantasy Our feet in the clouds, our head on the ground Around the world with ease What a fabulous feeling 360 Showgirls. That sounds like showgirl music. Oh, I'm working up to the showgirls. What a fantastic night. Thank you. Uh, now, you wanted to mention something? We have about a minute here. I know there's right, something I you want to do a off challenge. I want to do a challenge. I'm about 30 seconds now. They oh, okay, okay, let's just talk about something else then. We'll, we'll do this some other time. I was on the road. I'm through. I'm all through going to Colonel Sanders. Why is that? There's, thank you. There's too many decisions you got to make. You want original recipe, crispy, extra crispy, all burnt to hell. I don't know what to tell these people, right? <laughs> And I'm at, uh, you ever go to Baskin Robbins? Yeah, all the time. You ever go to, really? Can't yeah. keep me out of the place. Yeah. <laughs> you ever go to Baskin Robbins and you th there's some weird looking people oh, there yeah. that are working there. You think, uh, the, there's a guy behind the counter and you think, he doesn't really work here, the real employee's in the back, and this guy's <laughs> killed him. <laughs> yeah, I've had that experience. Um, 
George, nice to see you again. He'll be in uh, San Antonio December the 12th through the 14th at uh, Chip Flato's there, the San Antonio Comedy Club. And uh, tomorrow on the program, Jane Seymour and Robert Klein. Is that it? That's it? Thank you, everybody. Good night.